Hi, folks. This is Jonathan here, the host of the MIFA podcast. I wanted to break in and let you know that what you're about to hear or see is a repost from an earlier conversation that I had with MIFA's Director of College Planning and Education, Julie Shields Rutina, and Wheaton College's Director of Student Financial Services, Susan Beard. And it's about a topic that I know there's a lot of questions about, especially with financial aid season coming up, and that is filing financial aid forms for divorced or separated parents. We always get a lot of questions from parents in this situation, so listen up or watch, and I'll check in with you before the end of the show. Oh, but I do want to say that if you have any questions related to planning, saving, or paying for college, career readiness, or reaching financial goals, you can call us at 800-449-MIFA. You can email us at collegeplanning at mifa.org. And you can reach us on social media. On Facebook, that's MIFA MA. On Twitter, that's at MIFA Tweets. And on Instagram, that is MIFA underscore MA. Now, let's go to my conversation with Julie Shields Rutina and Susan Beard on financial aid for divorced or separated parents. Welcome to the MIFA podcast. Today, we're going to have a special segment devoted to the very meaty topic of financial aid and the financial aid process for divorced and separated parents. This is something that we hear over and over again, um, questions from parents who are divorced or separated, and it just adds an extra layer of anxiety and, and sort of uncertainty to a topic that is already kind of fraught to begin with for most folks. So uh, with us here to talk about this topic is the director of college planning, Julie Shields Rutina, and the director of student financial services at Wheaton College, Susan Beard, who is a frequent uh, collaborator and friend of ours. So it's always nice to see Susan. Hello, everyone. How are you? Hello, Jonathan. Hi, Jonathan. Thanks for having me today. But I'm excited to have everybody because uh, it's something that we've talked about doing for a little while now. We've seen the, the need of it. Every time we do a financial aid presentation, there are always questions about you know, what if the, the student's parents are, are separated or what if they're divorced, who fills out financial aid forms? So let's just get right into it then. If there is something that you want divorced separated parents to understand, even before we get into forms or anything like that, um, what would it be about this process? Well, uh, Jonathan, I'll just, I'll mention two things that I say to, to people all the time um, is that, you know, people are anxious about the financial aid process anyway. And then when people are divorced, they really think this is going to be terrible. But I just like to say some things are, are the same, no matter what. And one is to, it's really going to be helpful if you learn and educate yourself about the financial aid process as early as possible. I guess in, in the case of divorced or separated parents, uh, if both parties do that, and uh, hopefully MIFA can help with that, and this might help with that, but I think that's really key. And that's true for everyone, whether you're married or you're divorced or separated. And then the second piece is that communication is super important. I know that can be more difficult um, in a, a family with divorced or separated parents, but the key is even even married parents sometimes think differently about uh, what education, higher education should look like for their student. You know, maybe one parent went to a public institution and thinks that's exactly what I want my son or daughter to do. And the other parent wants a different experience. And so I think all of those things need to be talked about. And again, as early as possible, uh, no matter what the status, the marital status of, of the family is. Yeah, and Julie, I'd like to add too that um, parents uh, that are divorced or separated are, are sometimes a little uh, fearful that their information may be shared with the other parent when applying for financial aid. And um, you know, I would just assure them that colleges are quite adept at handling information from a custodial parent and a non-custodial parent, and never the two shall meet um, or be exchanged. Uh, and the student, um, the student will may be privy to both sets of information, but 
Um, everything is quite confidential. And, and I think we, you know, all of us as financial aid administrators are always aware of the dynamics um, and, and use extra care when, when families are, are faced with, with a different situation. Then I guess let's go to the first question that people typically have, which is in the cases of divorced or separated parents, who fills out the financial aid forms? Uh, and there's a, there's a, a multi-level answer to this. So I don't know if you wanna get started on that, Susan. Sure, I'll dive right in. So um, the custodial parent is the parent responsible for filling out the financial aid applications. Um, and that may be just the FAFSA, the Free Application for Federal Student Aid, or colleges may also require either the CSS profile or their own institutional application for institutional financial aid. Backing up to the FAFSA, the custodial parent will complete that form and also include any information if they have been, um, if they're remarried. So their new spouse or the step parent has also got to uh, be included on the FAFSA. In the case of a CSS profile or a private school's own financial aid application, um, the custodial parent will also fill out that form along with the step parent if that's applicable. But the non custodial parent may sometimes be invited to the party at that point and also have to do a non-custodial parent's profile or institutional aid application. And just like with the custodial parent, if the non-custodial parent has been remarried, then they also need to include their new spouse's information. So in, in effect, some students may have just a custodial parent filling out a FAFSA form the other end of the spectrum would be custodial parent and new spouse, non-custodial parent and new spouse, all filling out profile. So it does, like you said, it gets very multi-layered. Now, I can I add one piece to that too? Because it's a question I get often, I'm sure we all do, uh, that people will say to me, who is the non-custodial parent? And so the definition, uh, especially the federal definition, uh, is the parent that the student lived with more in the last calendar year. Uh, but then I many times get a follow-up question to that of what if the student uh, lived, lived equally in a joint custody situation? And so the second layer of that is the parent who provided more support. If that's also equal, then they really just need to pick a parent who will be the custodial parent for the college process. Is that what you would say, Susan? I was going to say that exactly. It's really, um, it's very critical actually that that once the, the custodial parent is established, um, the student should also use that, make sure that that parent's address and their home address is consistent on the admission applications too. Um, it, that can create a little bit of um, confusion at a college in general if the student is listing more than one home address. Julie, I was going to add a third layer, though, to the who is the custodial parent. Um, one of the questions that we've both gotten is, well, I don't, I don't claim my child on my tax return, um, but my ex-spouse does. And that really doesn't matter in terms of filing for financial aid. Um, you may never be claiming your child for whatever reason or agreement that you reached with your with your ex-spouse, but um, the tax status in this case does not matter in terms of defining the custodial parent. So cute. Yeah, that's a great point. And, and I wanna make sure that people understand too that the, the thing that determines whether or not you just have to file a FAFSA or if you have to file more financial aid forms, are the colleges that you're applying to. So some colleges, a lot of colleges, are only going to require a FAFSA, which is the free application for federal student aid. But a lot of colleges also want a CSS profile, for example, or a different form. So, um, mm -hmm. so that is, you know, how many parents need to file depends on sort of on where you're applying. So when we talk about FAFSA then, it's it's a bit easier, as in all things, right? Because it's right. cut and dried. 
non-custodial parent doesn't have anything to do with filing a FAFSA. In the cases mm -hmm. of a CSS profile, though, can you just walk me through a little bit? Sure. Um, so the student will usually have a College Board account, um, especially if they've done SATs or taken SATs or, or used some of the College Board's products, um, College Search product, products. Um, they will log into their College Board account and create um, and complete a CSS profile using the custodial parent's information. There is an opportunity at that point for the student to indicate that their parents, their biological parents are divorced or separated or never married. And um, they have the option of asking the College Board to send a link to their non-custodial parents' email address with instructions on, on how to proceed. Um, and I think that's a really nice tool that the College Board has built in for a number of reasons. Um, it sort of removes the custodial parent and the student from, from asking the non-custodial parent to do a form. Um, but then it also, and it, I think it also would emphasizes that it is a, a confidential process that non-custodial information doesn't have to be submitted through the custodial parents portal or, or anything like that. They have their very own application. So, so they'll be instructed by the college board's um, email uh, up on how to actually link to the College Board and fill out their own non-custodial parent profile using the student's name and account. I know from experience that it, it, it can feel a little convoluted because when you're asking, it, it asks for the student's information, you create a student account, but then put the parent information. Um, and I, I always tell parents to utilize the College Board's help uh, functions and, um, you know, look at the FAQs and, and they do do a pretty good job of explaining, you know, going through the process on, on what has to happen in which order. Um, but I don't, what I, what I fear is that it gets a little too involved or complicated and parents give up. We certainly don't want that to happen. No, that's great. And I think we, you know, I experienced that on a personal level too. So when we found that that piece was a little tricky, I think MIFA has started to put together some resources and slides from the College Board, and we'll make those available to people too when they're completing that. Yeah, and you know, I remember Julie, if I may, you we were talking before, and you mentioned this uh, going through this process yourself. Um, you know, with your ex-husband sitting right next to you, trying to, to fill out the forms, which is uh, great. But we do know that, of course, not every case right. is is like this, and and not everyone is is sort of fortunate enough to be able to do that. Um, so, thinking about those cases where maybe there isn't any contact between, um, you know, divorced or separated parents, or, or you know, something a little more um, serious. This is a question that comes up too. So, and one thing that we're always careful to say is that there is a process for that as well as a non-custodial waiver that you can apply for. And and I don't know, if, Susan, if you could talk to that process a little bit. Colleges that require the non-custodial parents' information are are you know well versed in counseling students and families who. Who may not be able to obtain that information and um, sometimes right on the college's website they will have instructions on how to submit um, a waiver request uh, a request to waive the non-custodial parent information a lot of times um, the colleges will ask that a letter come from the student with um, documentation or verification from a third party to attest to um, the fact that that non-custodial parent is not available or should not be available um, for you know a plethora of reasons. Um, the College Board itself actually also has a waiver that it publishes so that students and um, or the custodial families can um, see that and submit uh, a request to waive. Ultimately, it is up to the colleges to make that decision whether or not they will waive the form or the information um, from the non-custodial parent. But um, it is it, it it's absolutely something that 
families should investigate directly with the colleges that, to which they're applying. One of the very common situations that we get is um, a custodial family or parent or the, the student applicant will tell us that their non-custodial parent is unwilling to complete the forms. It's not that they're unavailable, but they don't, they maybe don't agree with the college choice or they don't agree with financial aid in general or whatever reason that they're, they just won't fill out that form. Um, and generally speaking, colleges will not take unwillingness as a reason to waive non-custodial parent information. And um, so Julie and I have had this conversation with many families and many, um, both custodial and non-custodial family uh, parents that we want them to step back when they when they say, and this goes for the custodial families too, sometimes they aren't willing to fill out the forms. Um, but at that point, we, we ask them to put their child in front and, and remember that just by filling out these forms, it does not obligate them to pay the college bill. What filling out the forms does is creates the opportunity for their child to be considered for need-based financial aid. Um, and when we, we turn it around and explain to a parent that, that you know, they're preventing their child from receiving what could be thousands of dollars um, and not obligating themselves to pay the bill, then I think that makes them feel, most feel more comfortable and, and hopefully more willing to complete the forms. Well, yeah, and, and, and that sort of brings me to another thought, which is something that, again, we were discussing earlier, but um, this is the issue of maybe when there are two remarried parents, right? And maybe they, each of those um, families are a little bit blended, right? So you have a maybe, a, you know, ex-husband remarried, um, stepmom has kids, um, but, but dad is still planning on paying or, or contributing for um, his child who was an who he is now a non-custodial parent of for example um and yet some uh, on the financial aid form um you know he's a member of this new household maybe which is has more children so um i wonder if if, if we could just um speak about that a little bit well, so I guess what I would say is that it, it's it, it's good. A lot of families have a plan for paying for college, and their plan may not match what the financial aid process plan is, but there has to be uh, an equitable process that's across the board. The federal government has, has a process that treats everyone the same way. And then institutions who use the CSS profile also have a process. And so it is really important for families to go ahead and follow the process. And, you know, with the custodial parent completing and then the non-custodial parent and with the spouses if necessary, um, and, and just following the directions as they go through. Uh, because colleges really wanna be fair and treat everyone the same way. Um, and then backing up to what we said, then that's how the eligibility for financial aid will be determined. And then the families can figure out how to pay after that. Um, one additional piece I'll say, and then this is good because I can ask Susan too, is families who feel that their situation is really unique and that's why they have a very special plan to, to divide that a certain way, are welcome to share and, and, and write that up and share as much as they can with an institution so that the school can take a look at that. Uh, but that's outside and above, that's above the, the actual first step of just going through the process and completing the forms as required is that's what yeah i would absolutely agree with that julie and and the theme through all of these th these questions that we're we're talking about and discussing um is is communication is so important um Julie, you're fortunate to be able to communicate with your ex. Um, many families are, but as Jonathan pointed out, some are not so fortunate or some mm -hmm. don't want to be <laughs> in that situation. So it's critical then that the, the common bond or the student, the child, um, knows what's going on with the process. Um, 
we say this at our, this is the first thing I say at our financial aid seminars is whenever I, I'm talking with students or I see students in the audience or, or <laughs> in a webinar, um, thank you students for being here. It's um, critically important that they understand the process as a whole, but then also they need to, to know what their parents have to complete in order for them to, to qualify for financial aid. And um, I, I think it's sometimes the student's the conduit between their parents, the, mm -hmm. the custodial and the non-custodial parent. Um, college um, financial aid officers, we while we are, we can be pseudo therapists every once in a while. We, we are quite uncomfortable with being marriage mediators. So, <laughs> so we, we do ask that, that the child or the student have, have a, a pretty good involvement with the process so that we can at least relay information um, to each parent that way. Um, so I just wanted to, to kind of, I keep, I have all these little notes around myself, communicate, communicate, communicate. It's so important within the family, but then with the colleges as well. You mentioned something uh, a little earlier about maybe sometimes overcoming a little bit of um, emotion, maybe a little reticence, maybe a little um, embarrassment at, 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 you know, being in a situation where maybe the parents are not talking to one another. Um, but, uh, you know, if you could speak to that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Jonathan, for reminding me. Um, so just from our.